saints of God, holy and dearly loved, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for our meditation today, the celebration of the uh, transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ, is from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, where God spoke to Moses in the burning bush. Who is Moses? He was, of course, a Hebrew child who was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, who grew up in the household of Pharaoh, who killed an Egyptian when he saw one of his fellow countrymen, a fellow Hebrew, being beaten. And Moses is the man who ran for his life when he heard that Pharaoh wanted to kill him for this action. That is why Moses had to make for himself a new life. He ended up getting married and having children and was leading his own quiet life. He was the shepherd of his uh, father-in-law, Jethro, a Midianite, who was a priest. And at the end of Ex Exodus chapter 2, we read that the king of Egypt died and the Israelites shook from their slavery, that they cried out to God, and their cries went up to God about their slavery. God heard their pleas and remembered his, his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. God saw the Israelites, and he had compassion. He understood their situation. That is why Jesus speaks to Moses on Mount Horeb. Yes, you, you heard me right. Jesus speaks to Moses. The text is clear that it is God who meets Moses on the mountain. Jesus is true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity. And as the Apostle John tells us, nobody has ever seen God. God, the only begotten Son, who is in communion with the Father, has made him known. And so Moses was driving his sheep behind the desert and came to the mountain of God, to, to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of a bush. Now the word angel means messenger. Jesus is the messenger, the one who speaks for God, the image of the invisible God. That is who Moses saw. Now, Moses saw the bush was there and that there was a fire there, but the bush was not being consumed. And so this translation has Moses being surprised. He says, wow, look at that. I've got to go check that out. And so he approaches, and as he was drawing near, God spoke to him from the bush. It wasn't a voice from heaven that spoke, like the voice that spoke when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. No, it was the voice of God coming from the fire that was speaking. It was Jesus, and he called Moses by name. Moses, Moses. Now the text translates that as Moses' response as being, here I am. But really, in the language of the day, it would have been, what? Huh? What a surprise for Moses. First, he sees this burning bush, and he goes to check it out. Second, he hears his name being called. And finally, from the voice, from this burning bush, he hears, do not draw near. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. Moses hides his face. Hides his face in the same way that Adam and Eve tried to hide themselves when they heard the voice of God walking in the garden. Like Pierre, like Peter, who said, Lord, go away from me, for I am a sinful man. Sometimes when I've invited people to church, they would make the excuse, I can't go there. The roof will fall in on me. What they're saying makes sense in that they understand that they are 
sinners, that they are holy, that they don't deserve to come before a holy God. And truthfully, that's the case for all of us. All of us are sinners. All have fallen short of the glory of God. None of us would dare, ever dare come before the holy and righteous God by our own merits, as if we deserve to be in his presence. It is not up to us to draw near to a holy God. Rather, God invites us to come to him. And God draws near, draws near to us. How did Jesus make himself known to Moses? I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now normally when we hear this in the text, in scripture, it's I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So, so why is there a difference here? Because Moses grew up in the household of Pharaoh. He was adopted. The God who comes to him and says, I am the God of your biological father. I am the one that he worships. I am the God of your biological ancestors, of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. He makes it abundantly clear. I am not one of these Egyptian gods who's speaking to you today. I am the living and true God, the God of your people. And what does God say to Moses? I have seen the suffering of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cries coming from before their oppressors. I know their suffering, and I have descended. I have come down to deliver them from the domain of Egypt and to bring them into a, pay, to a country flowing with milk and honey. What God announced that day was his salvation for his people. God heard their prayers. He was keeping his promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that the promised land would be their descendants' inheritance. And how? Jesus says, now I am sending you to Pharaoh, and you will bring my people out of Egypt. Jesus not only saw the sufferings of his fellow countrymen, his Hebrews that were in Egypt, Jesus saw suffering of all humanity. People who cried out to him in the face of death. People who could not overcome their sin. People who were tormented by the devil. And Jesus came, he descended to deal with these things. That he might be our God also. To offer salvation for all humanity. He didn't send anybody else for the great task of salvation. He himself came to accomplish it not to offer us a little piece of land in the Middle East, but to give us a better homeland, that is to say, an eternal dwelling. Now, as for Moses, Moses recognized that he was unworthy, unable to meet what Jesus required of him. He says, who am I to go before Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? How many of us have felt the exact same thing. How many of us feel that now? That we are unworthy? Or that we are afraid that we don't have the skills necessary to faithfully serve the Lord? Or, quite simply, sometimes we just don't want to serve God. History is filled with people like that who run from God, who try not to do what God demands of them. But God promised to Abraham, I will be with you. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And he promises to be with us as we serve him and serve our neighbors in love. Jesus is God with us. And whatever we do, we need this reminder that God is faithful to us. We can be sure and certain that God is present. And there are times where that presence terrorizes us. It makes us afraid because we realize that we are sinners. There's times where we don't want to do what the Lord asks of us. When we want to avoid him and run away, just like Jonah did, running from God when he was called to go preach to the Ninevites. For Moses, he was assured of God's presence when God said to him, this will be the sign for you that I am sending you. 
when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will serve the Lord on this mountain. It wasn't a question of if, it was rather a question of how and when. God is faithful. He will accomplish what he wants for his people. And it wouldn't be until finally Moses came back to that mountain and worshipped God that he would recognize the salvation that God had provided, that God is indeed faithful to his people. We can ask, however, if Moses actually believed the promise, because he answers God, I will thus go to the Israelites, and I will say to them, the God of your ancestors is sending me to you. He doesn't say, my God is sending me to you. He doesn't even say, the God of our ancestors is sending me to you. It seems that by his words, Moses wants to distance himself from God, from this whole endeavor, that he has his doubts. And that's why he asks the question, if they ask me, what is his name, what shall I answer them? He wants to have all the answers, because he doubts God, that God's people will follow him. He wants a deeper, more profound revelation wants to be able himself to call God by name. And how does Jesus reveal himself to Moses? I am who I am. Or maybe even better, I will be who I will be. And that's why he identifies himself to us as the God who was and who is and who is to come. He is the eternal one. God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, is sending me to you was what Moses was to say to the people. This is my name forever. And this is the name by which you will call on me for generation to generation. And so God gives this name not just as the name of his salvation, but so that his people can know him, so that they can call on him in every trouble and praise him and pray and give thanks to him. This is the God who is faithful, who makes himself accessible to his people. He who came still comes to his people. He answers their prayer. He's there not only for the people of the Old Testament, but also for all generations. And he is there for us. He is the God of our salvation. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus reveals the name of God the word Jesus, the name Jesus means the Lord saves. And that is who God ultimately is. And that is how he wants to be known as your savior from sin and death and the devil. God heard the cries of his people Egypt, in Egypt, but he also hears our cries today. And the God who came to Moses in the burning bush and Moses beheld his glory comes to his disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration, and they behold Jesus in all of his glory, but they have something even surer than what they experienced. They have God's word. And the glory of God was revealed on another mountain, Mount Calvary, where Jesus was crucified in the sins of the world. And because of Mount Calvary, Jesus invites us to Mount Zion, to the eternal rest, to the Jerusalem above, the city of the living God, that we might live with him forever in the God who has dwelt with us so that we might dwell with him for all eternity. In the name of Jesus, 